Hi everyone, it's Kasia from Taromap. Today I would like to do a VR to Kelly Bear. I just watched Masha's Musing by Masha. I'm going to link her channel below. She's gorgeous. Um, VR she's done to Kelly Bear's video. I also am going to, of course, link Kelly Bear's video in the um, in the description box. But uh, I haven't seen this tag before and I thought, oh, that's fun. You know, I just want to do something that's communal and um, has to do with tarot because we all love tarot. So let's just start without further ado. I'm going to look down here because, of course, I do need a little bit of support. So five four three two one that's the name of the tag i think you all probably go um you know what it's about so five is about five tarot decks kelly bear hasn't specified what are we talking about five tarot decks what so i think everybody has a freedom to do she said do you do you so in my case what i'm going to talk about is five decks I reconnected with recently. So we did have, um, you know, we do all have a lot of tarot decks, right? All these shelves are filled with tarot decks, in my case, tarot and oracle decks. And of course, you don't get to play with everything at once. You know, you get decks, you love them, you put them on the shelf. And then a couple of months later, or sometimes years later, you pull them out and suddenly like, Ooh, I love those decks. Okay. So um, I chose to talk about this five tarot decks I recently reconnected to because I got two particularly two decks that I thought like I will kind of, I couldn't get close to or I couldn't just get into them. And I thought maybe they just not for me, but recently they did click. Okay. So the first deck that I recently reconnected to is this red, red Threads Tarot by Linda Hill. It tells a myth of Ariadne and Dionysus. It's a wonderful, wonderful myth and I never have gotten into it before. Linda has sent me this deck months ago and I love Linda's decks, but I couldn't get into it, you know? It just wasn't the right time. I didn't really know the myth that well. I knew about it. I knew what it is about, but I never really got into it fully. And recently this deck yeah, started calling to me and I, um, I got into reading this myth, into reading, you know, from many different books I shared actually on my Instagram. In my Instagram stories, you can check out the books on all the different goddess cultures and matriarchal, uh, um, matriarchal cultures uh, like Minoan culture uh, on Crete that you know explains a lot of how the myth can be seen from many different angles on one angle it's a story of the hero that gets rid of a beast so perseus gets rid of minotaur he promises ariadne to be you know her husband takes her away from her home and of course leaves her on the island so there's you know betrayal there is uh, falling in love, wanting to help the loved ones and then being like broken hearted and broken by them. In the ancient um, iteration of the story, Ariadne then meets Dionysus and um, they get together. There's a sacred marriage of the feminine and masculine. So on the very, very deep level, this deck is about connection of masculine and feminine, of the marriage of the sun and the moon. And the, the, the symbol of the bull, of the beast, you know, keeps continuing for generations and centuries from different cultures, from Egypt onto Crete, um, into the Greek uh, culture and so on. So it's a fascinating, fascinating myth, fascinating deck. Uh, Linda's art, if you like it, you won't be, you know, you won't be uh, disappointed. And also it gets this red thread tarot. A book as well which is really lovely and you get a lot of information about the myth you get great uh, quotations so yeah I thought I will not get into this deck but I so did and it's an amazing deck so I'm really happy about it another one that I'm totally surprised by is the Cosma Visions Oracle and I've had this one 
I got it, I think I backed it on Kickstarter at some point in 2020. I never used it. I was trying to, um, but I never, never used it. So this booklet is actually really amazing. I just did a reading with, with this deck a couple of days ago and I thought, wow, why didn't I use it? Look at the like just it's beautiful so um with this deck i'm really excited because it has a different interpretations to regular you know regular tarot decks and with this booklet you can really work on deeper issues karmic issues it's so much fun to explore all this stuff the artwork is amazing, it's by James E. Reeds, and of course he has those miners that collect, connect, you know, into one big story. So it's a fascinating project. Um, the Fool is Death, how cool is that? And uh, when you actually read about Death, you know, he always says what's the mirror cut in the tarot archetype. So here we have the full, of course, it's the new beginning, second chances. He describes what you can see on the cuts, and then there's like a little write-up. And I love this. It's He says, if death comes up in a reading, do not be alarmed. Take the hand that guides you as if it belonged to an old friend and grab tightly. For death in this oracle is a sign of life. It can represent a grand beginning, second chance at living or mastering two lives in one lifetime. Beginnings can also be restorative and it is more often than not that we forget to realize the beauty in the infancy of things so yeah i hope you can get the gist of it it's a really cool it's got nice um human cards you know court cards and they like different archetypal kind of beings like you know commander protector it has major arcana and changed meanings um of the miners different you know there's birds there's embers lotuses and trees and, and it's fascinating and I kind of can't believe I'm, I was even supposed to sell it at some point. I'm so glad I didn't. Look at this box. It's so cool with the um, silver dots. So anyway, Cosma Visions Oracle, so surprised by it. So these were the two decks that I was just like blown away by and totally reconnected with. And then my friend Naomi at some point has sent me this amazing limited edition of Gaian Tarot. I'm forever grateful for it because I used to have Gaian Tarot before and I just never really, I, I liked it, but I never really connected to it the way I do to this particular edition. The cards are actually really big. If this is the regular Tarot, these cards are huge, but the paper uh, and just soulfulness of how they feel, I, I love them. So Naomi, if you ever watch this, thank you so much for sending this deck to me. I treasure it as much as I treasure our friendship and I really appreciate this deck and recently I pulled it out and I just love this star card. So I pulled it out and it just gives me like especially around Day of the Dead uh, for connection with the ancestors and just doing some deeper spreads for myself like I really really enjoy it. So this is another one that I reconnected with. It's a mass produced, I think, by Schiffer. Um, I don't particularly like the, those blue borders in the mass version, but I used to cut them off, I think. So another one that I reconnect with recently was this Terror of the She. And it's just, you know, one of those decks you either love or you don't. Also pretty cool booklet with like interesting write-up. I did chop the black borders here in my decks. I have this deck forever. I don't remember even how, like definitely a couple of years. So this is the, uh, like I love taking it to nature because it has this very, you know, she uh, energy. And I love taking it here into my surroundings, into the forests. It just has great keywords on the cards. I really love how it reads. It's one of those decks that I think I would just always like. I do have an interview with Emily Carding if you want to check out her energy. I love her work. So um, this is Lorna. I even named this she person. 
Um, I always, before I even enter into using this deck, I always ask her for permission. I feel like she's, you know, inviting me, taking my hand. So I always have a little short visualization with her. Love this deck. And then the last deck that um, I love, and it's not a very old deck. It's by Midnight Tarot. It's Tarochi 23. I just love this deck. It's a Marseille deck and I just really enjoy the just the colors and the 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 artwork and how big the people are and how simple the and the the suits are, you know, the pips are. It's just beautiful and it feels nice to read. I love um Gergely's decks. So, yeah, if you're a fan of Marseille Tarot, take a look at Tarot G23. And I have to mention, like, honorable mention, Kanti G Oracle. It is such a great deck. So these are the cards I pulled for myself recently. And I maybe not that I reconnected with it because I really love this Oracle deck. But here we have this Roots Grow, grow uh, From Your Feet. Um, I got so this was the first one that I got it has said clouds pass but the mountain remains then I got the roots uh, grow from your feet and then I got your pinky finger turns into a bird so how cool and um, this oracle deck is wonderful great booklet too so okay honorable mentions we have that okay so next one four four tarot books and I mentioned this Red Thread Tarot as a first book. Um, it's the accompanying guidebook for the Red Threads Tarot by Linda Hill. And it is an in-depth kind of dive into Ariadne and Dionysus myth, as I said. But because tarot is about life and tarot is about culture and tarot is about symbolism, I mentioned a couple of books that I used to research this myth further. It's only that much that you can put into a companion book. So Maria Gimbutas, of course, The Language of the Goddess. Very cool. A little bit about this myth in that particular book. Uh, a little bit in the Women's Encyc Encyclopedia of Myths and Secrets by Barbara Walker. Much more about bull, cow, and this whole symbolism of the holy marriage, sacred marriage, but Buffy Johnson. It's called Lady of the Beast. It's a great book that just goes through all this different goddess lineage with through different animals and symbolism of the animals and and bearing unbearing and Jules Cashford and um, the myth of the goddess this was a special there was a special chapter you know on on the lady of of the labyrinth and um yeah this was a very insightful and uh, so, yeah, if you're interested, I recommend these books for just exploration any of any myths and mythology connected to different look at myths, because often they are told from the hero's perspective. And these decks or these books show a little bit different um, take on it. Another one that I thought I want to show you is the Future Ancestor Companion book. This is a new book by Lexa Luna Studio. Um, you know the Future Ancestor. Future Ancestor Tarot is one of my favorite decks. It's such a cutie. It's just such a beautiful, soulful, sweet deck. So, you know, if you didn't know it, I have a review, of course, of it. You can take a look. It's very gentle, very beautiful. Just a soulful, you know, soulful deck. If you need like a hug me deck, this is a perfect deck to use. It has a cute little pamphlet with the deck, comes with the deck. Very short, but like to the point, not like, you know, boring. <laughs> it's really nice to use. I use this pamphlet when I read with this deck. And then uh, Alexa sent me at some point the Future Ancestor Tarot companion book. And it's like a very interesting take if you you know if you like stuff like this but it has poems it is um it has little write-ups it has all the cards nicely printed it has a space for you to write things so it has questions and so on it's a very 
yeah, it feels like the deck, you know. So, for example, if I'm just going to read up the star's message, okay. So, the star card looks like this. Blanketed in sweet, sweet morning dew, the earth below and the clear skies above receive you. Let curiosity and wonder be your guides. Now that the storm has passed. Yes, the storm has passed. You try, you're tired. Your tired body and mind are safe to rest. And then there's a couple of questions. The ritual to the star. Releasing is healing. So it's very kind of sweet booklet. So if you like this deck, um, I recommend this one. Uh, I also really like this Tarot in Motion book. I also have this deck and an interview with um, the creator with Miriam Jacobs on my tarot channel, uh, YouTube channel here. And this is an interesting one because it takes you into somatic experience of tarot. So the description of cards um, give you like, you know, meaning. They give you, can you see this even? Oh, there you go. So you get a meaning, you get uh, expressive movement quality, if it's, you know, what element, uh, pace of the dance that you can do, chakra, physical thingies, astrology, intention and suggested practices. So, for example, for High Priestess, if you would like to dance the cut, she suggests, she suggests wear a robe or a shawl, follow your intuition, go inward, move like a comet and twirl around. These are just suggested, of course, but Miriam Ryan's classes as well. I think this is just a fascinating um, approach to tarot that you can take a cut and actually dance it. Um, another one that I wanted to mention is not a tarot deck, but it's an explorer journal uh, of Wonder Walking by Amy T. One. It's a beautiful companion uh, book to Deck of Wonder Walking. It's so well made. It's so beautiful. And I don't know, there is just a quality of Amy's work that it's really gentle. I don't know if you can see a theme here. I most probably need a <laughs> really gentle works and decks right now it's so creative she gives you so many different prompts if you like her work if you like the deck for wonder walking this explorer's journal it's really worth um, buying and then the last one i wanted to say to show it's the one that i still am reading you know it's one of those books you don't just read from a to z it has it is translated by marius hognesen and it's um Paul Marteau's books on, book on Tarot de Marseille. So it was in French, he translated it into English. And you get, uh, if you like Tarot de Marseille, you get a lot of different information on the cards, on the majors, on the minors. It's, you know, just interesting historical um, twist on your tarot knowledge. So check it out. Okay, so one of my favorite spreads is a free card reading just open spread so any type of deck will do you just pull three cards and you try to make sense of what they're showing so for example here we would have you know people always take kind of like prominence so here we have two people but they're not necessarily wanting to communicate right this guy is just focused on something he's doing this guy is like, whatever, I don't care. I'm going to, I don't know, <laughs> you know, do something. And we have four of cups in the middle. So for now, it seems like they really don't kind of get uh, onto each other's nerves too, too much. But it can lead to five of cups, right? If they don't start really noticing one another. Let's say that's just like, you know, an interpretation without a question. So usually you would have a question or you would be as specific as you wish. Sometimes it's uh, fun to practice just like generally what the cards show. So this is one of my favorite spreads, just very simple. Another iteration of it that I do, um, that I do for, you know, sometimes daily draws, it's from my creative tarot class. So if you like my work, you can support me. I have a lot of downloadable classes. And you can take a look. This one is from the Creative Tarot class when I show you a lot of different um, 
ways you can work with many decks and be creative with your tarot. So what I would do, I have a, I have a deck and then I shuffle it, you know, however you shuffle it. And then I ask for the energy of the day, like what's the, you know, important thing today. So today, let's say we have this guardian of the water. This is just like the main general vibe for today. And usually I just observe the day, you know, during the day I keep remembering this card that maybe if I'm too fiery, I keep remem remembering the guardian of water. And today, for example, I, just, I got my period. So, you know, I also may be a bit emotional. It's how I can calm and be present to my emotions. And then I take a card from the bottom of the deck and we can see five of fire. So here what I mentioned, I may be a touch, you know, <laughs> uh, intense. Uh, it can happen that the fires will fly off with hormones. So this is, I, I put it on the left hand side of the energy of the day and this is kind of what I call like beware of so this energy may pop up this is energy that may like take you off your course or something you know off your balance beware of it like uh, just see that like this can come up and how would you deal with it probably is suggested by the guardian of the water and then from the top of the deck again I take another card and this is a card that says embrace this so this is four of fire. So we see a picture that I may be a touch emotional today. I should be bewaring of spewing fire to someone. You know, this can be words that you say. This can be like really big charge of energy. And then rather than going that, internalize it, like conceive it like four of fire. Here it's very ritualistic. Do some ritual with these emotions, you know, or empty it or allow this to serve you rather than you know burn people around you so this is what i would do energy of the day beware of this embrace this and then another spread that i'm really loving and often use is what i call the compass so this is jean noble bar artisan tarot and i just put five cards out, I get the medium card, the center card, it's the most kind of important card for now. So we can see some like endings here with ten of swords. This is energy that it's going kind of away from you. So it's a little bit like past, present, future. Uh, so I pulled the three cards first. So we can see that some kind of form of hanging or not being able to get things done or move forward it might be ending but you've got to be careful with your energy or you might be mentally exhausted from trying to cut the fucking rope and then underneath uh, I call it like unconscious influences so something that's there that wants to come to the surface that maybe like runs you unconsciously it's something that you need to become aware of so here we have four of wands and maybe i have more energy stable energy to disposal that i think of right now so sometimes the cat might be positively aspecting you or you know sh telling you you have no energy just fucking rest and here is what's conscious where can you take strength from and here i have four of swords so I have more fire than maybe more stable fire, more fire than I thought. Um, and I also can concentrate this energy. I like how here we have two flowers in between the ones. Here we have four of swords, one flower uh, protected, you know. So always four of swords to me, fours are quite stable cards. So both fours, what I can bring, um, you know, strength from and what I can actually get out of my, you know, um, unconscious or subconscious mind and see something that's uh, showing up here. So this compass is like past, present, future, conscious, unconscious, or what to do, what kind of not to do or be, you know, it's something that you can like play with these positions a bit. All right. So these are my three spreads. Okay. Number 
two paraphernalia, tarot paraphernalia. So I wanted to share again those amazing bags. Um, I love keeping my decks in the boxes. That's my preferred, oops, preferred way of keeping my decks. But if the boxes are, you know, huge or uncomfortable to use, or if they like these big, big boxes, I love to transfer the cards into the bags preferably crystal haven bags because they're amazing so um for example they're just so perfect you know the way she does it they like really really special and so well made uh, she's an artist herself she just crochets this thing Obviously not by hand, like, you know, she does this with machine, but nevertheless, like really, really amazing, amazing decks. This is for Oracle Door. I love this. And then this one's my favorite with the pomegranate. So, so good. So her bags are amazing. They have, they're really comfortable. They're not too big, not too small. You know, you can put regular tarot card deck. She also does orders. So I'm going to link her shop below. And another paraphernalia, you know, I love scents. So um, what I do recently when Magdalena from Wolf of Coins came to visit me, she um, sent me a link to this cool um, burner where you can burn incense. So, you know, those raisin incense or herb incense, I put a little foil on top of the little, um, you know, place where you can place the incense so it can just last longer and doesn't get glued on. But this is a really cool one. So I love scent. I use essential oils, you know, in, I like the cold water diffuser so I often do this I have also the diffuser that just you put just the oil in but this one I use only when I'm sick uh, I love using as, uh, flower essences for before reading the cards you know during there's just the like, amazing support for energy work and energy body and I love at times you know depending but I love light and scent the most, flower essences, and then, of course, sometimes crystals, you know, either because um, some of them just call me uh, for a particular deck or particular time of the day. I wear my uh, wands of transformation, you know, that I used to make, and sometimes gorgeous friends. This is sent to me from Natalia. I don't even know if she remembers this, but... Yeah, I use this for my braided river with Carolyn Hillier very often. So when you use and work with your crystals more and more, you know, like with every tool, they get more and more energy and they feel just energized when you work with them. So this would be my paraphernalia. And um, one would be advice for tarot people who learn, who want to start learning tarot. Well, for me, I... Um, I have a very short advice. <laughs> so first of all, I, I would advise keep learning tarot systems so you can break out of them. Use your intuition, work with image and be playful and be creative. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you soon. Bye.